Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello and welcome to the podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue. And right across the table is ZD Donahue. And this is Sewing Out Loud. And if you like what you're hearing here, we have another podcast as part of our network hosted by yours truly, Mallory, um, called The Self Sewn Wardrobe. So that's on iTunes. All of those podcasts are originally recorded as live videos in our Facebook group called The Self Sewn Wardrobe with Mallory Donahue. So if you are a Facebook group person sometimes I get people requesting to join and it says like member of 147 Facebook groups. <laughs> yeah I know <laughs> like, like how do they possibly? okay I mean, uh, you know they, they, they don't participate uh, in all those I don't know or, or they're fickle and go fl- flip between them or something well, no judgment here whatever no, no but, do whatever uh, you want you know go join our Facebook group it's the best um really is a lot of fun so anyway uh today we're gonna talk about um how sewing is not easy. Okay. That's what Mallory wants to call it. I want to call it sewing is complex. Only smart people do it. Yeah, the way I want to phrase it is we don't sew because it's easy. That's true. But I feel like you can mess with some like punctuation in that sentence and it can say like we don't sew because it's easy. And that's, that's not right. what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. Okay, so we, we don't sew for the fact that it is easy, for the reason that it's easy. Right. In, or simple. It's not truly that simple, right? Right, right. So we, we sew for lots of different reasons. That's why I think we're all smart. Exactly. Right. I mean, even if you're just got, if you've got the courage to try it out, you know, you're, right. maybe some people wouldn't think that that is uh, smart. I don't know. Um. So uh, anyway, Mom, you want to start off with this? I have something in my brain about uh, this, but well, it's your topic. I you know, part of what I was thinking about is, you know, there's other hobbies, right? Is that what we're going to call it? Sure. A hobby, an art, or whatever. Obsession. An obsession, yeah. whatever we call it. But, you know, in, anyway, you have this, you know. Desire to do something, mm-hmm. to entertain yourself or produce or make something. So I, I guess, you know, with most things, it seems like a more finite thing. So if you want to paint, you know, you get some paint and you take some lessons and you get paint and brushes and some canvas or whatever you're going to paint on and you start painting and your bob intention doesn't screw up. <laughs> or <laughs> you yeah. don't have your needle in backwards <laughs> or, I, you know, you don't even need electricity. You could like paint by candlelight if you wanted. Uh-huh. Or, I, sewing has a lot of aspects that your mind has to take care of and encompass and then like put into this one thing. And then you're actually like producing this other thing. And you don't really just even produce one thing like it could be. Like we're saying, you know, a bra or a bag or, right. you know, I mean, there, or you can sew, you, you know, you can make quilts, you can, you can, you can paint with, you know, thread and make quilts, or you can be a garment sewer, or you could be a practical sewer and make bags, or you're a doll, a doll sewer, you know, there, I guess what I'm saying is it's big and can be overwhelming. Well, and that's why I think that the sewing media landscape is sort of like lush and ripe for people to share what they're doing right because when someone does go to sew something in particular sometimes it can be hard to find somebody or or it can be really awesome right to find somebody who's done the thing you're trying to do like a bra or a doll or well, a certain well, type or of bag. just or just the type of fabric you're going to yep. work with yep you know i say paints now you know there are acrylics and there are oils and, you know, you can use pastels and there's watercolors. And those are all techniques and all techniques that need to be explored and, and learned, you know, if, if that's where you're going. But, like, the media, to, the fabrics, like, to sew on, it seems like they're never ending, ending. And they just, you know, more and more just keep getting invented. So let me come at this from, like, having studied painting and drawing in school, okay? Right. So I think that the hard part about 
the visual media like that is making all the choices of what to include or not include in your picture to make it, you know, compelling. And of course, there's lots of different styles that you can, you know, not only compelling, but pleasing. Yeah. But in schools that you can follow. But it's like when someone gets out a paintbrush and a canvas. Okay. And this is once again, um, maybe needs to be put into the category of like how people see sewing. Okay. You know, we we didn't talk about that a lot. Okay. When you get out the brush and the canvas, people are like, oh, that's an artist. Right. When you get out your sewing machine Mm -hmm. and you go to make like jeans or a coat or something, you're not always given that type of like respect. respect exactly. Now I'm not gonna say right. like it's not like everybody who gets out a canvas and a paintbrush is revered. You know, there right. are, there are people who are like that's dumb, you know, or whatever. Or, <laughs> or you know, the, I know yes. I know that we can all get flack right. for some of our unconventional hobbies, and right. I, you know, I've been there. So, um, but like I studying the fine arts, you know, sewing and making clothing and everything that's put into like the decorative arts. That's, yes. a, you know, it's, and that's not given the type of place right. that um, painting is given, whether it's, uh, you know, naturalistic, right. representational painting or whether it's abstract painting. And sometimes I'm, I get, like, when I was kind of dealing with that in school, you know, I would get into things like pattern or, or, or like, you know, color and stuff. And I would be told that that was too decorative and not like fine oh, really? art e enough yeah. yeah and then of course you know someone can come back and say oh well you know matisse cut well, up paper i was into gonna this say if you, you know, think sewers are yeah. again <laughs> try out some painters right yeah. exactly so so there's there's lots of you know uh I, I know that the worlds cross over but let's talk about like me and you Living in the middle of America, you know, and this right. is this is how we well, get portrayed or, or he, seen. He, well, here's know? another little analogy that I mm-hmm. thought of. So, Mallory, Mallory has performed in professional theater since you were what five, six? Yeah. How old were you? I mean, for a little while. Well, it was kind of a fluke because she went to a um, uh, an audition with an older sister, and she got a really good part. <laughs> Her sister got chorus. But anyway, she was in regional, you know, summer stock theater with professional actors at Equity House. So anyway, like, this is real serious stuff. So Mal- and Mallory was very good, and it came naturally. And, and you did that for the next, like, 12 years. Mm-hmm. And then you decided to costume a show. Now, while Mallory was doing all this performing... I was doing a lot of professional costuming. I was uh, costuming for um, that particular theater, actually, that you had tried out for then, some other um, professional theaters and houses here, and then also just, um, you know, high school things and right. choirs and school whatever. Stuff, yeah. Whatever came up, I got it, right? Okay. So um, you decided to costume a play. Yeah. And you weren't in it. Right. It was like the first time that you weren't in it and you were participating, you know, and you were the costumer. Mm -hmm. And you said to me, oh, my gosh, there's so much to this. Like performing's nothing compared to this. Yeah, you know, especially like, you know, when when mom says like it came naturally, like we, you know, I had two older sisters and we were always singing and, you know, I... Sometimes it's hard to find a loud, dramatic child. and Except in our house. I was, you right. know, that kid, and I could be Molly and Annie, you know. Uh, and as I got older, it wasn't as novel or unique a talent anymore, you know. <laughs> but uh, when So it was my senior year in high school, and I was um, costuming Will Rogers' Follies. And uh, that musical is so boring but it's <laughs> it's a big costuming though it's, it's a, a big, big, it's big huge co- yeah but it's kind of slow da, 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 but there is like a, there are two female but it's leads. like a big variety show it's well there big, are two yeah. female leads and my choir teacher said well okay you're now you're gonna costume this he said because you could have had probably one of the lead parts because i was a senior girl and blah 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 you know and I, i'm sorry if i wasn't supposed to disclose that or something but <laughs> What, and I said, no, I want, I, I want to costume it. And I was afraid that I was going to get, like, really jealous 
of the performers. The, the performers, because I really love to perform. And, like, you know, being a girl, there's a lot of competition around this neck of the woods. Like, all the girls, you know, want to be in right. the shows and everything. Well, yeah, there was a lot of talent. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, of course, yeah, surrounded by – their the, the show was double cast because there were so many awesome people. Um, so <clears> – <throat> There's a song in the show called Favorite Son, and if you look up a Tony Awards performance of this show, that's basically what my show... No. uh, (laughs) (laughs) They have on these different colored gloves, and they have all these costumes, and da-da-da, and get this. Mom had costumed this number for my sister's show choir, what, like, 10 years before? Yeah, it was probably. Eight, and, 10 years before, or whatever. And so I got to use those costumes, and I remember the feeling, kind of getting way into this, but we got all those circle skirts together. We, You know, you dyed the gloves for me. I got all the costumes together, and there are all these kids on stage. And the set, you know, I didn't do the set, but the set came down, The these American flags, I'm not even a particularly, like, I love red, white, and blue person. But when the costumes made it look so solid and good, and I was so proud that I was like, this is a completely different feeling of pride. It than is. Just it's like the magic happens. Performing. Right. And I, you know, it, it was, it's so much to think about. Sewing just for one person, yourself or your kid, um, or sewing for 30 people is, I think, the amount of thought that goes into it. I mean, is is huge. And all those people are different sizes. They're all different sizes. They're, They're all different personalities. Right. Um, maybe your family is easy to sew for. Maybe they're not. Maybe your actors are easy to sew for. And maybe then you have not. a director, too. And then you have a director. Right. <laughs> sometimes he's good and sometimes you he's know, not. So, so I... Um, what's the coolest thing that I've brought home from the shop recently? Okay, I don't know the formal name. It I call it the Floriani, Floriani cutting kit. Well, I think they call it the embroidery toolkit, but who cares? Oh, okay. It's, but it is a snazzy case set uh, of five scissors. And my favorite thing in here is actually these mini duckbill scissors. They're great for applique. They fit in your embroidery hoop. I'm crazy about those, but I'm also liking the small embroidery scissors with the little pointed tip. Love them, love them, love them. Yeah, those things, like, they can get in there. Yeah, yeah, they get in the spot. I also really like the little squizzery snips in here. Yes. That you squeeze uh, in order to cut. Uh, They are curved as well, so that's fabulous. And then there's the four-inch straight blade scissors. I love them. I love them because everybody needs a little pair of scissors that are sharp and good. And as a nurse, I bet you're happy that there's a little pair of offset tweezers in there, too. The offset tweezers. I love, I love, I love. And you can get in any spot in a machine or a garment or anything. And they look like a little crane to me. They do. And they're real pointy on the end. And they aren't grooved in there. Right. So that they don't get a bunch of lint in them exactly. when you're using them. If you have this kit and rotary cutter, you've got it made. Absolutely. And this makes a great gift. And it is on sale now at sewhere.com slash cutters. You'll see all the rotary blades and shears and scissor kits that we carry there. And if you use the code ZD cuts that's z-e-d-e-c-u-t-s at checkout you'll get 15 percent off all cutters that we carry at sewhere.com so long and so happy so, 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 sewing out loud. when you're when you're sewing for yourself you have all these choices to make and i've said this one time before and it might have been in the other podcast but i i had this acting teacher who i had in paris and he said your talent is in your choice that's right. And I was like, oh, like that applies to so much, like right. to sewing and painting and, and, and deciding what you're going to wear. Like, are you choosing this fabric or that fabric? And, you know, in painting, you, the materials do matter. Right. But yeah. Not, oh, absolutely. not quite in the same way right. as they do in sewing. So when somebody chooses, they're like, oh, I want bright yellow fabric. Well, it can't be bright yellow linen for your bathing suit. That's right. I mean, right. somebody's going to be like, I made a bathing suit out of linen. You know, okay. <laughs> you know, it can't, it can't be bright yellow, stretch, shiny stuff for your 
coat that right. you want to make, right? So there's so there's so much, except we just saw a coat with well, water in it. <laughs> well, that, well, but the thing is, that's what I'm saying. And then you have to figure out what's the right needle and what's the right thread and you, what's this right equi- stitch. Equipment mask. Right, right, yeah. right. So, mm-hmm. so you, you know, you are an artist. You know, and you're a technician. You're a technician, mm-hmm. absolutely, and you're a mechanic. Yeah. You're, you're, you're so many, well, and you're a construction worker. Yep. I mean, you're an architect. You are building those clothes. Well, and something you mentioned on the group was, like, someone was talking about home deck sewing. And you right. were talking about recovering chairs right. and making drapes and things right. like that. And, like, how hard that type of work can be on your oh, body. Oh, just physically. physically. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, like, just picking up a drapes sometimes it you know and carrying them across the room it, yeah like it wears you out what derek and i made those 40 foot long drapes right you know right. Or, were they i guess they they weren't 40 feet long i can't remember maybe they were i don't know anyway um they right. were really really big drapes you know and we what about to, the ones we made for the ragtag that's what i'm talking about oh okay yeah yeah, yeah, yeah that's what i'm talking oh, they about they were they were big i don't know i can't remember right yeah yeah so um it's just ragtag you don't say the Oh. You're gonna sound hip. Um, okay. Oh, sorry. It's it's just ragtag. It's just ragtag. Okay. Like it's just New York, not right. New York City, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah. The, those those drapes were huge, and then we had to like move them to the location, right? And right. hang them, right. You know, and stuff. So and you had to, and, and you did, and, and again, and, and a lot of artists have that problem. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, especially like sculptors and things. Like I can put, I can make this art, but then I have to transport it so i may have to take it apart in pieces and then put it back together again or whatever well and i do think about the physicality of painters you know like people think about jackson pollock like standing over the painting and throwing all the paint and then but there are people like who do go out and landscape paint and like hike up miles of oh absolutely rock and tote all their stuff and i sometimes i do think that i'm like you know sewing is you know very domestic right there's not a lot of like. So the trenches are usually like have HVAC in them. Yeah, yeah, that's just, well, you know, <laughs> Maybe. one would hope. Well, I was yeah, going to say, right. I've been many a costume shop that was a sweatshop. Yeah, too, with, with right. no AC, right? You know, um, but uh, the other thing I was going to say when we talk about technician and thought and everything, you have to think about how the clothes are going to wear. Mm hmm. And what's going to happen to right. them in the future? Right. You know. Uh, well, and, and and you, you, I, I mean, you you do have to think. Some clothes are temporary. This is, if this is a Halloween costume, believe me, I sew it differently than I sew almost anything else. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, then I sew what a wedding gown yeah. or an evening gown or something that you know I want to look more pristine and mm-hmm. and last longer or whatever. And you know, so you have to think now. If I I made a red cape on Halloween for a little red white account, and I made it very pristine and very good because I knew we would use that cape over and over and over again. Gets used and, a lot. Yeah. In fact, I think your sister has it at her house. Yeah, she yeah. kind of hoards it because she wears it a lot. It's good for like Little Red Riding Hood so you can be a character or, you know, whatever. Anyway. Well, but, and I do think, you know, painters do have to think about this too. Right. And they they come up against different types of wear on their artwork mm-hmm. or, it's, you know, sometimes they find out their materials don't work well together over time. You that's know, well or, and, you, and, 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 that and, and so do people who sew yeah. well I guess but what I'm saying is they also they still don't have to worry about if that bobbin's wound <laughs> or or you know if the tension's alright well, or if their tension disc rope I mean there's a lot you know and they don't have to change their needle no. I mean it, and sewing is very most, complex most painters aren't any more grinding their own pigments and mixing their own that's stuff. right I mean some people do but right uh, that you know just to just to kind of dig dig into that little well, well or there just you know more. we just had the thing on uh, the self worn worn wardrobe self sewn <laughs> wardrobe where someone asked you know someone to do some work for sew for them you know someone was sort of pressuring someone to sew for them they have no concept no concept of the time um, and I don't want to discredit like a painter or another artist and what they do, but you can do a painting in an afternoon or so, and you don't have to fit it to anybody. You get to fit it to the, you know, size that you want it to be, mm-hmm. you know, you, I mean, 
so there there are a lot of things. I just I just think about like we're we're very skilled. We're very perceptive. You have to organize this stuff in your mind. I mean, yeah, you can write it down, but a lot of it's going on in your head too, all at the same time. The other thing I wanted to say was I so obviously we enjoy the complexity and the challenge of sewing, right? Apparently. And so <laughs> Every time I see something on Pinterest or in a magazine or wherever, right. and it's like, no sew pillow cover. Oh, I know. Or yeah. like, no sew curtains. All I think is, that's got to be a piece of crap. Like- well, it's the same thing when, when they're like sewing these curtains on HGTV you know, and I see how they're doing it. Right. Well, right. hold on. Yeah, okay. I can see the process. So that yeah. no sew headline is supposed to excite people. You know, I just sort of laugh. It's supposed yeah. to say to people, "Hey, it's making it easier." And my reaction is always, "I'm not interested." Well, my reaction so, is low quality. Yeah, and right. so I'm saying, "I'm not interested," and that means that we want the high quality and we're willing right. to put in that right. time and we everything. Are. We are. You know, and giving yourself right. credit for that, of course, is important. But, yeah, you have to, to make sure you have the right needle, the right bobbin. And does your machine – you know, there are people who are talking online, you know, not not just in our group or something. But they'll say things like, my machine won't do that. Or, oh, my gosh, I was never told to thread with my presser foot up. Right. Um. Oh, my gosh. How does that person get anything done? Well, like, isn't that amazing? That uh, people, that's the most basic thing in the world, that you have to have those tension discs open to thread your machine. Well, but those people and, are struggling right. through this process. And right. I'm like, oh, my gosh. they like, I feel I feel really bad because I feel like there are some really simple things that they that's can right. learn to make right. it easier. Right? right. You know? And I'm like, man, like, that means that they're spending even more time no, than I that's am how on my pers- stuff, yes, right? They're you know? persistent and they really desire yeah. to do it. Now, I think the other thing is, I really think I know why I wound up sewing. Mm-hmm. And it was like, because I would look at things and I'd go, how did that get made? And I mean like a shoe or a ball, you know, a baseball that was sewn together or um, a car seat or a couch. Or I would look and I'd go, oh, I bet I could do that. And see, no one was sewing around me. Mm-hmm. So it was sort of like intriguing to me. Right. And I was going to figure out how to do that. So I think that's where, where where my impetus came from. Yeah, and you know, you were sewing around me a lot, and I don't know why I thought about a lot. Like you, you say that stuff, and it sounds exactly like my thought process. And I feel like, well, you used to say to me, "How do I do this?" But, but you, or something you too. say that, and like. I think I almost had those thoughts because you were sewing around me. You know, I'd watch right. you do something and be like, oh, okay. And then I'd look at more things and get more inspired. So I think that's kind of funny right. that, like, I would – if if I were describing, like, my memories and why I like to sew, I'd right. almost use the same language you were. And we both <laughs> got to it, you know, in a, in a different way. Because, you know, I remember a teacher, somebody who was teaching me something about sewing. She's like, well, we're going to make this doll. You know, uh-huh. and it was just a pancake pattern, you know, and I just, I said to her, I was like 10 or something, and I was like, oh, well, I can see how that's made, and she was right. like, well, okay, and I was like, I still want to make it, you know, right. but like, I, you know, I was like, uh, a little overconfident, but I guess not super overconfident, because I was right, you know, about, about how it was made, you know, right. um, but Well, I, confident doesn't have to mean arrogant. No, I, right. but uh, I think, I think I was, ta- maybe she was taken aback a little bit, but I think that's because I was around you so much and seeing you, you know, make things and, right. and stuff like that, but yeah, I, but we don't, we really don't sew because it's something that's easy. Well, and we don't sew anymore because it's required because you're a housewife. Right. Or it's required because you're a tailor and that's your job. And the other thing that's happened with sewing is there are so many different aspects of it. There are people who are doing tailoring. Mm -hmm. You know, there are people who aren't doing tailoring at all. In fact, they're doing loose-fitting clothes or whatever. You know, there are people that desire to make their own underwear. You crazy people. But (laughs) Oh, whatever. You're making yoga pants. You're like, what? you're one step away from underwear. But, you know, the other thing is I... Okay, so you know we're developing and and um, have a have a wonderful you know 
audience and online presence like through these podcasts and just meeting so many wonderful people. And there's a lot of like click baiting going on in the sewing community. And they're yeah, always... well, I'm really liking our click a lot. No, 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 no. Oh. Click. <laughs> I don't think you <laughs> I have to have a joke. <laughs> that was a really good joke. <laughs> I thought everything was just getting too serious, but go ahead. Okay, she means like clicking on stuff. On co- Tell them what you really mean. I really thought you didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> I thought that you were truly, you're like. <laughs> okay. No, I was Somebody's just Somebody's going to review the podcast and be like, those stupid women were laughing for five minutes. <laughs> no, I do. Don't okay. you love our group? Okay. Like, don't you love it? That was the best pun <laughs> ever. I can't wait for this episode to be released. Okay. Click. Tell me you don't like our click. <laughs> I love our click. <laughs> I like our click. Uh, click. Okay. So, <laughs> click baiting. Okay, you thought I didn't know what I, I you really were talking did. about. So, like, that even Mom, makes it better. That even makes it better. Click baiting means, okay, click, well, click baiting means. Okay, listen, I work with title. all of these young people, and they sit around and they go, well, you know, that person's just old, and they think like that. And I look at them and I go, what are you? talking about you there are young people that say stupid things too but go ahead mom you're on fire tonight okay (laughs) don't know what you're on you're on fire all right so clickbaiting you'll never forget that means to to uh uh write a sensational headline that gets people to click like that stuff that you see that's like you'll never guess what well it's how many hits you get yeah yeah but the the, you know right okay so original clickbaiting would be in sewing like five minute bag (laughs) Right. Okay. Yeah, right. right. What what else? Come up come up um one hour t shirt. Right. Or something like that. And I just sort of was like, I know some fast things to do. Like I got some tricks up my Oh yeah, sleeve. I do too. Yeah. Hey, maybe maybe we need to like, you know How about the, our little knit sewing cuffs? Yeah, yeah. yeah or like right. like put put that and you know, I was just like, you know, that's that's not really that's not what us. we're doing. That's you not know, us. we're not no. really it, here for the quick fix we're like, trying to hear for quality and when you have all the knowledge that we're right hopefully trying to well get across, i think that's what we're here for is is a knowledge share but that makes you that makes right. you faster you know when you when you have the knowledge it doesn't mean that you like get everything done really fast but i think that you can sort of like troubleshoot well i think i think there's problems. fast but also there's efficiency and it doesn't have to be fast but it also allows you not to waste time yeah, or no, or more right. easily fix mistakes. Well, know? that's true too. Oh my God, I'm dating. never, I'm never putting the same color needle thread in the serger as as my loopers ever again in my life. Oh, did you do that this last time? Well, it's just that I had to. I, I'm doing all of this prototyping, yeah. and I had to take out a lot of stitches. And I thought, why would I ever match do the that. threads? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's why you need to go to sewhere.com and uh, find our serger thread packs, right? Yes. Um, okay, we forgot to put in a message break. <laughs> I bet Sam has found one and you've heard one by now. Right. But, uh, okay, so we won't put in the surgery thread uh, message break. But we we did this, I think, a really smart thing. And we put together packs of right. surgery thread. And they're, most of them are four surgery threads. Well, and it's and what people were asking us. Yeah, How do we thread blend? What what colors should I buy? Do and we I, did the right. episode on that, right? And so we these, did. these thread packs are like four shades of pink or there's a light neutral pack and a dark neutral pack and a shades of green and a shades of um mm-hmm. uh blue we need to do like the color purple i uh, yeah, yeah. We, uh, we could name them after we'll name things them. or we whatever we should name them after snow, movies or songs snow white or, yes. you know okay so those 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 packs are really good and off topic all right so <laughs> anyway we don't sew because it's easy but we do, you know, from sewing so much, have some of the knowledge right. to help people make things easier. But it's never, I mean, what is it, if you can get a shirt done in 20 minutes, what does it look I was, like? Are you gonna, I was going to say, are you going to say, what does it look what like? What does it look like? Now, I can get a shirt done in 20 minutes, but I will tell you that the research and development that went behind it Took a lot more time. Well, or like if you already right. have your pattern drafted, can, right. I, can I make an easy tea in twenty minutes? 
Probably. Well, yeah. You know? Once you've got it drafted, once you know uh, it fits, absolutely. If nobody interrupts me. If nobody no. interrupts <laughs> and you know the fabric you're going to use yep. and the sewing machine works and it's clean when you sit down to absolutely. it. Absolutely. All that stuff. Right. Um. <laughs> but anyway, what we know. I want to come up with quick baby titles for sewing. Like, like I want to come up with a bunch of fake articles. Oh, yeah. You know, like fake we, news. Yeah. The new fake news. Yeah. That's yeah. going well. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, go, go on. Uh, well, I think, you know, in winding up. Or in conclusion, or in you know, encapsulating what we just this talked always about. goes well, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, sewing is complex, and we shouldn't take any crap for it. I guess is what we, you know, I think we all should respect ourselves. I mean, I don't care if anybody else does, but I know to respect you because you sew, and you might not sew what I sew or like I sew or whatever, but I respect you. For what you do, because sewing is complex. That's right. You heard it here. Well, thank you so much for listening. You can find us on Instagram at ZD Sewing Studio. You can find us on Facebook uh, at facebook.com slash ZD Sewing Studio. Or you can go find that group, The Self-Sewn Wardrobe, with Mallory Donahue. And that's just loads of fun. And ZD and I will talk to you. So, so long and so happy. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit SewHere.com.